been an off-season where teams build and rework perfection. These high-speed storytellers, some emerging new stars beginning a new act, and other more experienced intensifying their legend, begin their long storied drive for the 2017 Canadian NASCAR Championship. 13 races in five different provinces. This is the True North, strong and fast. This is the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. A big thank you to Dave Moody for that kind introduction. Here we are at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park for the Can-Am 200, the first stop on the 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series schedule. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross in the booth. Manning Pit Lane today will be Todd Lewis and Clinton Jeffrey. Adam, so it begins the 11th season of NASCAR racing in Canada. And as always, Dave, we start right here at the Canadian home for motorsport, the old Mosport Circuit. The 10-turn, 3.9-kilometer track is always exciting, and it kicks off a pretty aggressive 2017 schedule. Crisscrossing the country, there'll be street circuits and a variety of ovals as well across the nation. It's a busy schedule. These teams will visit five provinces in five months. It starts right here east of Toronto, and in September, we end up just up the road at Kawartha Speedway. And before we get into 2017, let's touch a little bit on 2016. Clinton Jeffrey has more on your defending series champion. Thanks, guys. It's been a busy off-season for Caden Lapsovich, who we see getting prepared behind the wheel of his number 76 Dodge. First off, the 17-year-old from Grimsby picked up his hardware at the banquet in Charlotte. He's currently finishing his last semester of high school and prepping for college. And just last week, he was selected to the NASCAR Next program, which highlights the future stars of the sport. Today, he starts 11th. Thanks, Glenn. We've had lots of rain here already today, and with that, NASCAR has declared it a wet weather race. So these 25 NASCAR late models will move to their treaded tires. And for today's command, let's send it trackside to legendary Toronto Maple Leaf, Johnny Bauer. Natalie Davis from Castrol, Canada, helping Johnny Bauer with the command as the engines fire here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. There's a good look at your E3 spark plugs pole sitter, Kevin Lacroix. David, such a great sound on opening day to hear the field roar to life. We have a look at LP Dumoulin of the WeatherTech number 47. And a lot of hope at the start of a brand new season. Jason White back in the 21. He's hoping to run many races as we'll ride along with David Thorndike in the 67 once again today. A fantastic field when we return. We'll send him off here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. The first race of the 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series is brought to you by Mopar. We built it. We know it. WeatherTech, the ultimate interior protection for your vehicle. And by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. There's the beautiful new Dodge Ram Pace truck, Dave, and let's have a look at the Spectra Premium starting lineup. And as we mentioned, it's Kevin Lacroix on pole in the 74. He'll start alongside the 18 of Alex Tagliani. LP Dumoulin in the 47 and Gary Clute in the 59 make up row number two. Rounding out the top five is Alex LeBay in the Can-Am 32 Ford and Andrew Ranger in the Mopar 27. Fourth row, it's Anthony Simone in the 95 and DJ Kennington in the 17. Looking back to row number five, we have the three of Jason Hathaway in the 22. Big welcome to Christopher Bell. Caden Lapsovich, your defending series champion in the 76 and JF Dumoulin in the 04. Row number seven has Matthew Scannell in the 02 machine alongside Adam Martin in the nine. Ryan Clute driving the 42 car and Jason White in the 21. Row number nine has Robin Buck driving the 43 this year and David Michaud behind the wheel of the 56. Brett Taylor in the 25 and Carl Gauthier drives the 69. Row number 11 brings us Joey McComb in the one and David Thorndike in the 67. In the 12th row, it's Martin Cote in the 11 and Larry Jackson in the eight. And rounding out the field, Charles Harvey in the 09. 
You can see the moisture on the windshield. The track is wet with more on the weather story. Here's Todd. Guys, with this declared a wet race, the strategy intrigue only goes up. Teams must put on the wet tires, but it is up to them to decide when they go back to slicks. No rain is expected for the next couple of hours. We always see great strategy involving fuel and tire switches. This only adds another layer that will be interesting to see how it plays out. And you can see parts of this track starting to dry already. So who knows, we may see some early pit stops. As, as Todd mentioned, strategy starts to play out. But the field bunching together. They work their way through turn number nine. That Dodge Ram pace truck off down pit lane, heading through turn 10, looking for the green flag. Race number one in the 2017 NASCAR Pinty Series is underway here in Bowmanville. Kevin Lacroix with a great start. Look at that. Three wide goes Anthony Simone down the inside. What a start from Anthony Simone in the number 95. Picks up a couple of spots as everybody tiptoes their way through turn number one. And it's visible how cautious these drivers were being through turn one. Now down into turn two and off camera corner to begin with on a wet track surface. This is a handful. Look at Andrew Ranger and Simone sliding in through turn number two. Now up into turn number three. The wiper going on the 95 of Anthony Simone. It's funny, the car in the middle there, the Pioneer Pools number 59 is Gary Clute. Talked to him before the race, said, Gary, how much experience do you have in a rain race? He said, well, I raced in the rain and go karts. And that's a, the way he explained it. I learned to race in a go-kart. I drive this like I drove in the dry. It's probably the same in the wet, right? <laughs> well, we'll see how he does as Simone takes advantage up on the outside. Turn five, and he'll complete that pass heading down the Andretti straightaway for the first time at speed. But wow, there's an example of how slick it is right now. Big horsepower in these NASCAR Penny Series cars. Kevin Lacroix a couple of times sideways on this long back straightaway. A new look for the 18 of Alex Tagliani in 2017, sporting the Lowe's colors along with EpiPen and St. Zubair. We go on board with a look at Andrew Ranger in the Mopar 27. Of course, this is the new Mopar M1 engine. He's the only driver in the field running this engine. And that brings him more in line with the spec engine program being offered. Uh, a lot of the rest of the field using that over the last several years. And what that does, it gives him a weight break, especially on the front. Those big built motors, a lot heavier on the front end of these race cars. So that new M1 engine that Mopar developed, a lot lighter. So that plays into the hand of Andrew Ranger a little bit more. And in talking with Andrew and his crew chief, David White, that's exactly what they said. They said, we think the horsepower is right where we need to be. They said, what we're really excited about is the weight advantage we now have. We don't have to run that heavier built engine that we were running. That'll give us a lot more leeway to be more aggressive with our setups. That's an awesome shot. You saw Andrew, or Alex Tagliani, you should say, just wrestling that Lowe's Dodge as here comes the 22 of Christopher Bell, a dirt track expert. He won the Chili Bowl in Tulsa, Oklahoma, his native Oklahoma, so he knows how to get around on a slick racetrack, and he's doing very well in his first NASCAR Pinty Series race, but he's got a former champion filling his rearview mirror right now. He's got a former champion that had to start the race from the back of the field due to taking too long getting the wet track set up ready. And LP Dumoulin not taking long to get back up into the fray. You can see how comfortable he is on the road course as he's won here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in the past in the dry, but he's earning his keep today. LP is one of a handful of drivers Whoa, in the field as we've got trouble. problems. Carl Gauthier in the 69 has gotten into the tire barriers. Significant damage to that race car prepared by Abby on Motorsports. And that is heartbreaking for the 59-year-old out of Pembroke. An interesting story just for him to be here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. The community really rallied around him and his NASCAR effort and his NASCAR dream. Those tire walls save a lot of equipment, but they sure do spit a car out when they're done. Now we'll see the strategy play out, Clinton. Well, two cars pull in here and get ready to take stops right in front of us. It's the 22 of Christopher Bellin, and here comes Jean-Francois Dublin in the 04. The leader makes the choice to dive along pit road and go from wet tires to slicks. Kevin Lacroix will make a four-tire change, left side first, then to the right. The 18 of Alex Tagliani also made the choice. He will go on to slicks. The interesting strategy, it looked like the 27 was coming, but Dave White said, no, we're staying out. They assume the lead. 
76 of Caden Lapsovich also down pit road. You see Adam Martin in the nine also down there. So everybody getting changes in the early going of the Can-Am 200. Your leader is the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Welcome back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in race number one of the NASCAR Pinty Series in 2017. Coming to the restart, Andrew Ranger, your leader, Anthony Simone, will restart alongside as they all hit the front stretch and they all come up to speed. And you can see from this beautiful overhead view, the track is drying in a big hurry, Dave, and that might be problematic for the drivers on rain tires. Only lap number eight of a scheduled 51. And some smoke now from your race leader in the Wolfhard Dodge of Andrew Ranger. Down through turn number two, Anthony Simone right in the tire tracks of that Mopar number 27. These two drivers still on that wet weather treaded tire, as is the 59 of Gary Clute and the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington in the number 17. And the trouble with wet tires is we see a little bit more smoke. It could be steam if there's water up under the car, but that looks like smoke, Dave. That looks pretty blue for steam as Anthony Simone ducks to the inside in turn number five. We have a new race leader in the innovative plumbing and Dodge Challenger. It's Anthony Simone. And he'll work his way down the long back straightaway. Andrew Ranger with the Mopar M1 horsepower. Anything was amiss when we rode on board with the 27 of Ranger, so maybe it fixed itself, possibly just some oil sitting on the headers and it burned off, but we'll keep an eye on that. No smoke showing anymore behind that Mopar Dodge. And we started to talk a little bit about running rain tires on a dry racetrack. It'll peel the rubber right off of these Goodyears because with the treads, it makes the rubber wear out that much faster than if you were on slicks. One of the drivers in this race who does have a wet weather victory is the driver of the 43, Robin Buck. He picked up a victory a couple of seasons ago at the Grand Prix of 20 Pierre. He saw him wiggle off turn number one there, but he is safely inside the top 10 and having a great run here today. And earlier on, we had a good look inside the car of LP Dumoulin and how busy he was. Dumoulin, along with Robin Buck in the 43 and a couple others in this field, actually make a living as performance driving coaches. This is exactly the sort of conditions that they teach others to prepare for, Dave. Now you see slick tires versus treaded tires. Kevin Lacroix in the bumper-to-bumper -bumper Dodge has pitted for brand new slick Goodyear Eagles, and they seem to be working very, very well. He's able to reel in the 42 of Ryan Clute. You saw Christopher Bell in the 22, not too far behind the 04 of J.F. Dumoulin in the Spectra Premium sponsored car in there as well. Spectra Premium coming on board for the full 2017 season for J.F. Dumoulin. experience as he can on the road course here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park because you remember the trucks come back in the fall and Bell seems to be taking to it pretty well as he pick up picks up the spot around JF Dumoulin. And Christopher Bell is a standout dirt racer as we go back having a look at Anthony Simone who is driving away from the field but Christopher Bell said before this race road course racing is a lot more similar to his dirt racing and sprint cars than oval racing on pavement is. I was shocked to hear that, Dave. Oh, well, he's got to chase Simone if he wants to win this one. Welcome back to the Can-Am 200 and a dry line appearing on the track. So out of second place comes Andrew Ranger down mid lane. 
the 27 makes a stop, but it's not for slick tires. Fuel, he should be good to go the distance, but stalls on the way out. Dave, these weather conditions are causing the crew chiefs to change strategies on the fly. We're seeing all sorts of teams come into the pits. Here's Gary Clute. 59 here to pit road. Crew swapping out to the slicks to get ready for the rest of this race. But as they do that, it starts to spit a bit more and we hear more rain is on the way. Everybody is on their smartphones down pit lane. They are looking at the weather radar, trying to figure out when the next rainstorm is going to hit or if it's going to hit at all. So we have now most of the field out on slick tires, but there's still a select few out on those treaded wet weather tires. And as we ride on board David Thorndike's number 67, you have to realize this track, Dave, is so big that what it's doing on pit road is not necessarily what the weather is doing on the backstretch or down in turn number five. Battle for seventh spot, Jason Hathaway in the 56 of David Michaud. Michaud having a great run in that car owned by Jim Bray. And we should mention, if you watched at the end of 2016, you saw that free car and Jason Hathaway announcing his retirement. He was going to step away. Kubota comes on board. They got some financing for a few races. Jason's still a race car driver. He says, you know what, I'm in. And he always does well at this racetrack, Dave. More activity on pit road. The Castrol Edge Dodge down into pit lane. 17 car hits pit road for the first time today. It too for fuel. He will remain out on the wet weather tires. Suspecting that it might rain just a little bit more. DJ Kennington, who started the Daytona 500 this year, realizing his NASCAR dream of starting in the Monster Energy Cup. But look at Anthony Simone out in front. All of the bad luck he's had so far in the NASCAR Pinty Series. He must be smiling beyond the wheel of that car right now. And it means so much for that race team to get a good finish here to start the season. As we have a look at the Dodge Dealers of Ontario Advertising Association number 43 of Robin Buck, who's in the fourth position. Great run. He's quietly solid, sticking all day inside the top five. And again, that battle a little bit deeper down between Jason Hathaway and David Michel. Michel giving that 56 car a great run today. He's also getting himself a great education following a former winner here around this racetrack. He'll go to the outside of Hathaway and turn eight. And down pit lane comes the 74, Kevin Lacroix second spot. Don Thompson is crew chief rolling the dice. Don pulls center Kevin Lacroix along pit road. This fuel stop should take him to the distance. He's got slick tires on. He's hoping it stays dry enough that he can handle it out there. You know, same with DJ Kennington, who just came in for fuel. This is when they would normally stop for fuel. Somewhere between lap 12 and lap 18, they should be safe to go the distance. Luke going around the eight of Larry Jackson. A firefighter in Mississauga actually went on a couple calls last night, came back to the track, and is racing here today. Great story. And Larry Jackson drives one of the CBRT race cars, but he works on all of them. He's an active guy in the paddock area for sure, but look at the lead, the 95 of Anthony Simone has built up, and it's about to evaporate. The 22 of 22-year-old Christopher Bell stopped on the entrance to the back straightaway. That race car has run out of steam, and it brings out a full course yellow. And Clinton is in the pit area, standing by with Christopher Bell's crew chief. Clinton? Well, we're here with Randy Steckley, crew chief for Christopher Bell. Randy, what's the story on the 22? Well, he's saying that he can put it in any of the gear, but it's not going anywhere. So we want to get him down here and assess the situation when we get it down on pit roads, take a look at it and see what's going on. Heartbreak for the youngster. His day ends early, but activity on pit road. Andrew Ranger getting some tires, and it looks like everybody who's on those treaded tires changing out for slicks. Well, teams up and down pit road putting on fresh tires. One driver who's not come in is the race leader, Anthony Simone. Todd, what's up with that? We were fully expecting the leader, Anthony Simone, along pit road. That's what they tried to communicate with him, but he didn't hear the crew properly, stayed out on course. This may work terribly against their strategy. They were having a great race. They're going to try and get him in and make the switch to slick tires and also fuel him to the end. Back with more of the Can-Am 200 from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park after this. Lining up for the second restart of the afternoon here on lap 24, and it's 44-year-old Alex Tagliani, a Canadian Motorsport Hall of Famer, who leads him into turn number one here in the Can-Am 200. Tagliani got a great launch on that restart. 
start, leaving Simone fighting for second as we go on board with Adam Martin's number nine. Now look at Kevin Lacroix. Moves up into third spot. He's your pole sitter, missing out on a track record by about a tenth of a second. But the driver who holds that track record is the driver the Lowe's Dodge. Alex Tagliani, he's got a clean track in front of him. He's got brand new tires underneath him, and he is quick. Problems for the 56 that David Lee showed. He did not get up to speed coming off that corner. Gets way out of the way off the racing line. And touched the grass at one point. Managed to keep it straight. We stay green. But now Lacroix around the outside of the number 95 of Anthony Simone. And I think you're going to see these teams that are on slicks really able to get more bite than Simone. The back straightaway is bone dry at the moment. How about a couple drivers we haven't really seen so far today? You saw the number nine of Adam Martin going by. The 0-2 of Matthew Skinnell having a solid ride. His first drive behind the wheel of that Omvik Leland 0-2. Driving for Carey and Susan Mix. They like the way he handles himself at the racetrack, so they've given him an opportunity to drive in a handful of this season. Mark Dilley will race on the oval tracks, but Matthew Scannell is going to race most of the road courses. Now you can see the bright yellow hood of the 59 of Gary Clute. We should mention he is down a lap to your race leader, so if he's in the mix, he has to make up a lap before he picks up spots. Good the look at the rest of the top five, though. You saw the WeatherTech dodge of LP Dumoulin solidly in the top three. And here's a driver we haven't talked about an awful lot, the defending series champion, Caden Lapsovich. In that 76, not a very experienced driver on a wet racetrack, but give him a steering wheel, a gas pedal, and a brake pedal. He'll figure out what to do with it. Think about this point last year and young Caden Lapsovich behind the wheel of the 76. His goal in this first race was to just finish. Then he finished, and he did well, and then he kept doing better, and then he went home with the championship at the end of 2016. An unbelievable Cinderella story as he chases Anthony Simone. You can see the Johnsonville number nine of Adam Martin. There's another driver who's made great strides in the offseason. Up inside the top ten in another car prepared under the mixed motorsports stable. Adam Martin has an interesting claim to fame in, in his brief stint with the NASCAR Pinty Series. All he does is finish all the laps. And, uh, he's unspectacular, but a couple of top five finishes on ovals is Jason Hathaway really working him over. He's rattling the rookie's cage for sure, but Adam Martin doing exactly what you need to do as a young driver. You're learning by completing all those laps, and you're learning by following a couple people who have won here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Right here, Dave, you can see if you look up the windshield, if he goes two feet farther to the right, it's wet pavement, and they're going to destroy these race cars. So even though the racing line is drying out, the level of focus and concentration that these drivers need to have is still at a peak. Now, if you make one small mistake, it can bite you anywhere around this 10-turn race course. It's legendary for eating up race cars. As you see a number of drivers who made that pit stop, you saw Andrew Ranger go by. There's Alex LeBay in the Can-Am number 32 sneaking past the 0-2 of Matthew Scannell. That's a battle for 10th spot. And as we talk about a drying racetrack, we're getting reports of mist. Hard to tell on the windshield of Jason White's number 21, but we're hearing the rain might be moving back. Jason White in the Halnor Plumbing number 21 currently in 12th spot. His Western buddy from Alberta back in 13th. That's the 25 of Brett Taylor. Great run for him. Uh, both of them having a really solid run as we go on board of the new home listing service number 25. This is one of the CBRT race teams and Brett's done a nice job this weekend. And interesting when you see this car from the outside, the 25 on the rear quarter panel, he has the large real estate taken up on the doors for his main sponsor and that's something new that NASCAR is allowing these teams to do in 2017. And the only team to take advantage of it so far as we've got a change for fourth place Bruin, the 95 of Anthony Simone trying to hold off the 76 of Caden Lapsovich. Boy, Simone can almost see the front end of Caden Lapsovich through his passenger side window. He was so crossways coming off that corner, but he manages to hang on to it and stay in front of the 76 of the youngster, Caden Lapsovich. They head down into turn number five as we ride on board with Lapsovich, and now we'll go down that long back straightaway. And while we've got the 
chance, Dave. Let's give a big tip of the hat to NASCAR Pinty Series Director, new this year, Sherry Putnam. What a weekend to start your new job. We've seen everything this weekend. She's doing a great job so far. In all these changing weather conditions, she definitely has her plate full, as do these teams and these race car drivers. You saw the mist on the windshield of some of these cars. Alex Tagliani continues to leave. He's got Kevin Lacroix right on his back bumper now as they complete the 28th lap. And we saw David Michaud in the 56 slow up just a few laps ago. He made it to pit road. They fixed what was wrong. Wow, big wiggle out of the 56. And that's right in front of your race leader. He'll stick to the outside. Tagliani continues to lead. You can see some body damage to the front of that number 17 car. DJ Kennington remains in the car, but the hood up, they're having a look. It looks like a tie rod at the front end. That's the serious problem. They will try and make repairs. DJ Kennington having a bit of an off in turn number five, and we'll have another look at what happened. Wow, long slide. I'm not sure if that slide caused the left front suspension to break, or rather steering, or if the steering broke, which led him to that long slide through turn five. Well, that curb is not a small one in that area, but have a look at this now. Dumoulin has joined the top two. He's up on the outside of the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Your race leader just ahead of them as they weave through lap traffic in the 67 of David Thorndike. Dave Thorndike has the best seat in the house for this battle among the top three. LP Dumoulin and his team, crew chief Billy Burns, made all sorts of changes this offseason. Went on the racetrack yesterday, Dave, and they didn't like any of it. Went back to his old trusted and true setup and look at him battling among the top three. And you can, they're all covered by a blanket as they head down the Andretti straightaway. It's Tagliani, it's Lacroix, and it's the 47 of LP Dumoulin. Raindrops on the camera down the backstretch. We could be in for something special here as the weather conditions continue to change. And you talked about a lot of work in the offseason. The 18 team had their work cut out for them. They came out here to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park to do some testing. Unfortunately for Tagliani, mechanical problems sent him off into the tire wall and destroyed that race car. For the fourth position, Cade Lapsovich has the spot. Jason Hathaway in the three, and Andrew Ranger applying the pressure. What a save by Jason Hathaway. How about that drift as he drifts back to fifth spot? Andrew Ranger jumps up in the Mopar Dodge. But let's have another look at this. Coming off turn 10, oh. and he could almost see right through the passenger window of Jason Hathaway's number three as he took over the fifth spot. Practically ice racing was the driver of the Kubota number three. Back up at the front, though, a new leader, and it's a 74 total lubricants dodge of Kevin Lacroix. Look at the concentration in the eyes of LP Dumoulin. Quick look up into the mirror. He'll finally get to fourth gear, and that steering wheel still moving around just slightly. We talked about his brother, J.F. Dumoulin, signing a multi-year contract with Spectra Premium. WeatherTech has come on board for two full years on the 47 for the driver from Trois-Rivières, Quebec. And now look at the moisture on the windscreen. It's raining again as they go by. DJ Kennington made his repairs. There goes the race leader, Lacroix, onto pit lane. You almost couldn't see him because he was following the 22 of Christopher Bell, but Lacroix down pit lane. That hands the lead to the 47 of L.P. Dumoulin. Don Thompson Jr. we've seen over the years as Caden Lapsovich trying to hold off Andrew Ranger. He has always been aggressive with his moves in the wet weather. And let's go down to Todd. And now the question is, who makes the call to switch back to rain tires first? It's the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, the pole center. Fresh set of wet tires to go on. They are banking on more rain to take us to the finish. It might also be a bit of wishful thinking, because Kevin Lacroix is pretty darn good in the wet, but as I say that, it's pretty darn good on the dry, too. I don't think you can go wrong with that driver. Now watch a driver with slick tires underneath him. L.P. Dumoulin in the WeatherTech Dodge is fighting that steering wheel. If you look at the top right corner of your screen, you can see the windshield covered in rain. It's not blinding, but with the speed these race cars are going, you want the best visibility you can have, Dave. The only saving grace is tires were up to temperature as you see a change for third spot, or a battle for third spot, I should say. Didn't quite change yet. It's Caden Lapsovich and the 27 of Ranger and put Ranger into that spot now. And all this happened. 
happening in the rearview mirror of Gary Clute, who's not on the same lap as the leaders, he is right among the battle. And he's able to pick up the toe from Andrew Ranger down the back straightaway, so that'll help him stay up amongst the leader and hopefully get the free pass if and when the next caution comes out. And with the amount of rain that is falling, it's almost inevitable that we will be seeing another yellow flag. And you can see the red light flashing in the back window, too. That's another thing that these drivers and these crews need to think about in a wet weather race. Everything they can do to improve the safety for these drivers and that flashing red light is one of those things as Caden Lapsovich heading down for some treaded tires of his own and we've got problems on the racetrack. Jason White into the tire wall. A big off and you saw the body damage to the back end of the number 21 Chevrolet. Full course caution and Caden Lapsovich already down pit lane. So he will be able to continue his stop without penalty. What a break for Lapsovich. Exactly what I was going to mention. As long as long as you're into the entrance of pit lane before the yellow comes out, you can do your service, and that's what they're doing right now as Jason White waits for some help. Let's have a look. It's in turn three. And you know what? If there's a gentle way to back it into a tire wall, that's pretty much it. And Dave, we're going to have a late race restart here in the Can-Am 200 as LP Dumoulin and the WeatherTech Dodge leads the way. series here on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley in the booth with me is Adam Ross. Both Clinton Jeffrey and Todd Lewis are patrolling pit lane as we get set for the restart. LP Dumoulin in the WeatherTech Dodge and Alex Tagliani in the Lowe's Dodge. The number 18 on the outside. Rain falling pretty significantly all the way around this racetrack right now. As you see, several different lines in through turn number one. Four of the top five drivers restarted this race on slick tires and it's hurting them right now. Brett Taylor can barely get the power down in the 25. You saw J.F. Dumoulin sort of lean against him into turn number one. Everybody gets a little friendlier in the rain. You tend to rub a little bit more. As look at all the drivers off into the runoff area in turn number two and one of those crossways. That's Charles Harvey in the 09. He gathers it back up. Kevin Lacroix, we've got one around doing a full 360 in turn number two. Still sitting on the racetrack, but you can see him get refired. That was Ryan Clute. Here goes Kevin Lacroix on the rain tires. He passes Alex Tagliani. Still your race leader, the weather tech number 47 of LB Dumoulin. He is still out on slick tires, and it shows. Turn number five, well out in the runoff area, but he gathers it back up. It just shows how good these drivers are. They're on slick tires, and look at the rain coming down. I don't know if this is fun or terrifying. <laughs> I think it's a little bit of both. Some bodywork flapping on the number 47 as the 74 of Kevin Lacroix goes through the top spot. With those rain tires, he is gone. The next two cars in line are on slicks, Dumoulin and Alex Tagliani. And then oh, you got a bunch of drivers on the race. The Off the track, into the grass, back on the pavement. He's got to go back across the grass to get back on the racetrack. And Kate Lasovich loses one spot. He'll drop in behind the Leland 02 of Matt. Skinnell. We should mention, too, that the number 95 of Anthony Simone, who we saw so much of in the early going of this race, has dropped out. Unfortunately for him, brake problems taking him out of this one. Yeah, never even stopped on pit road. Drove right back to the garage area. Heartbreaking for Simone. As you can see, LP Dumoulin, who went by in the early stage there in second spot, he is really having a hard time on the wet track. David Michaud in the Jim Brayo number 56. Again, keeping up that solid run. He had some troubles a little bit earlier on, but the car still in one piece. Again, getting laps on this tricky Canadian Shire Motorsport Park, especially in the rain. Kevin Lacroix extending that lead. I'm amazed LP Dumoulin still in second as more cars sliding through turn two. That's the 0-9 of Charles Harvey in the Haviland Dodge. Crossways, second lap in a row in the same corner, but look at this battle on board the Can-Am Ford Fusion of Alex LeBay. You don't hear the monstrous horsepower that we heard earlier on on these inboards. These drivers are really having to feather the gas pedal, Dave. 
And Alex LeBay with a veteran crew chief this year in 2017. Mario Gosselin joining that team on top of the pit box all the way through this season. You see the 22. Uh, Christopher Bell has his car repaired. <laughs> Look at how quick he is. You know, this is what he's here for, to learn. Learn road course racing, and if you can learn on a wet track, even better. This driver from Norman, Oklahoma, getting lots of experience. Good look up at the front of the field. Two drivers off the racetrack, through the dirt, into the runoff, back on the racetrack. And here comes J.F. Dumoulin making it a three-way show. Look at how far off the regular racing line they are. Three cars trying to drive on the racetrack where barely one car can fit. They're making it work around here as they exit turn number 10. Way down towards the inside wall, Dave, as you said, completely off the racing line, but that's what you do on a wet racetrack. Get away from all the rubber and all the oils that are on the track. And I was just going to say that we had such a lengthy time running on a dry track with slick tires. They lay down a nice layer of rubber, which is fantastic. When it's hot, sunny, and dry, when it's wet, that turns into glare ice. There's Scanell off the track. Oh, Matthew Scannell and the 0-2 Omvic Ford as we've got side-by-side -side battle. LP Dumoulin looking to the outside of Ranger. That's a battle for second. In through turn number three, Ranger out to the edge of the track. Dumoulin on the inside. Both of them crossways, and Dumoulin's going to hang on to the second spot. I can't believe how evenly matched these drivers are considering one's on a rain tire, one's on a slick tire. Andrew Ranger with three wins here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Dumoulin crossways. Ranger almost touches him in 5B as they get on the gas down the back straightaway. And you know what I wonder, Dave, as we go full course yellow. Yellow is out for the 0-2 of Matthew Scannell. We'll get him cleaned up and we'll reset the field here for the Can-Am 200. 28-year-old Kevin Lacroix from St. Eustache, Quebec, will pace the field back to green. We have four laps to go when we hit the line. It'll be three. Green flag is out once again here in the Can 200, a green-white checker. And look at the mist off the back of these race cars. They are treading through a soaking wet racetrack. Alex Tagliani in the 18, LP Dumoulin in the 47, still on slick tires, Dave. That is really rolling the dice on strategy because look at how wet this racetrack is right now. You can see the spray and just watch them tiptoe through turn number two as we ride on board the Kubota number three. In driving on a wet racetrack on slicks, it's not like driving on water if you've ever hydroplaned in your car. It's like driving on sheer ice. There is nothing to match your car up to the road underneath it. These drivers, I don't know how they're keeping control. Well, they're using everything at their disposal. They're using braking. They're trying to shift the weight of the race car, trying to get it to dig into the racetrack as we ride on board Alex Tagliani. And you know what's interesting as we look at the wiper on the 18 working away. If you ask every one of these drivers what's the biggest challenge, they're not going to tell you the wet conditions. They're going to tell you it's visibility, keeping the windshield clear. You can do it with wipers, you can do it with defrosters, but you've got to keep the windshield clear so the driver can see. Both Tagliani and Jumalay had a moment. Those are two drivers still on their slick tires. Keaton Lapsovich in the 76, keeping clean and picking up a couple of spots. There's J.F. Dumoulin in the Spectra Premium 04, the Can-Am 32 of Alex LeBay. Lost them in the mist down the back straightaway. There'll be two laps to go this time as the stripe as Kevin Lacroix continues to lead. If there's one thing I can think still keeping Tagliani and Dumoulin in contention, it's the fact that all the other cars on grooved rain tires have used up most of the grooves and they're just about down to slicks. They had a long stretch at the beginning of this one, did a number of those drivers. They kept them on for a long time, so you're right. They are fairly worn out, and just everybody trying to inch their way through and get back to the gas, but not spin the back tires to make the tail happy on these race cars. Down through turn number one, LeBay to the outside. J.F. Dumoulin to the inside. They're battling for a top five position. LeBay gets a great run through turn one. Now you look at the Dumoulin brothers, both LP and JF, have a lot of road racing experience. Some other drivers like Alex LeBay. Oh, wait. Oh, Tagliani's off, and there's the, what looks to be ice, and a big hit for the driver on the Lowe's Dodge. You can see the shine in that runoff area. It's just water. 
on smooth asphalt, but it feels like ice to Alex Dagliani. And we spoke about it earlier on as we go full course yellow. Once you get off the track, it becomes off camber. Hard impact in the tire wall. And what I mean by off camber, Dave, is you're going downhill. Downhill on a wet surface leads to a hard hit. We're under yellow in the Can-Am 200. And we are in overtime in the first race of the NASCAR Pinty Series in 2017 here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, setting up for a green-white checker finish. We've already completed 52 laps. We're going for more. Kevin Lacroix and Andrew Ranger, two veteran road racers and winners here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Get on the gas and they get going. There's two laps to settle in. What a restart for Caden Lapsovich. Sneaks up the inside as Caden Lapsovich in the 76 coming back down is the 27 of Ranger. What can you see out of that wind scheme? I don't know how these drivers are going as fast as they are. Oh, Kevin Lacroix way up to the outside through turn number two, but everybody's following him through that line. Good news, the 18 of Alex Dagliani making a quick stop at the medical station. He has been released. He is A-OK. -okay. And we should mention that car, the 59 of Gary Clute, back on the lead lap. He's made up two laps in the last two cautions as Ranger looks to the left side of Kevin Lacroix. They go down through turn number four. This is going to be fun to watch. Andrew Ranger has won three times here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Kevin Lacroix has five wins in the NASCAR Pinty Series, and he's looking for one to open the 2017 season. This is where it matters. This run down the back straightaway. Who can find the traction they need? Where is the race leader? He's in front of Ranger somewhere, but you absolutely cannot see. Andrew Ranger, one of the drivers using the Rain X or Rain Away on the windscreen. No windshield wiper for the Mopar Dodge. And there's Kevin Lacroix as Ranger ducks to the outside. Coming to the white flag. Ranger to the high side. Now to the inside. Lacroix off the racetrack on the outside. Ranger's going to stay on track and take over top spot as Lacroix rejoins. He lost about a car length. That's it. Off the racetrack, through the grass, back on the racetrack. White flag is in the air. One more lap to go. Sliding through turn number 10 onto the front straightaway and there is the white flag to Andrew Ranger. Can he hang on to it? Kevin Lacroix is going to pressure up through turn number one. It looks like a two-car battle for the win, but anything could happen among these running in third as here goes Lacroix to the outside to retake the lead. Ranger got the curbing on the exit of turn number one and that wiggled the car just enough as Lacroix got to the outside and almost into that very slick runoff. Right where Alex Tagliani did the same thing but he was able to keep it under control. Into turn number three, Ranger looks to the inside. You can hear them downshifting trying to use the engine braking rather than their brakes to slow these cars down as Ranger looks to the outside. Ranger gets a great run off of turn number three as they head up towards four. He'll be on the inside of turn four. Oh, oh Lacroix oh, wiggle. Big wiggle. Lacroix holds on. Ranger closes the gap just a little bit. In through five for the final time. Lacroix's on the outside a little bit. This is where Ranger made his move coming to. The white flag was right at the end of the back straightaway. Kevin Lacroix with a good run off the corner. Spinning the tires, every single gear they grab down the back straightaway. Caden laps him, and you see the nose of the red car way off in the distance. He's sitting in third right now. This is where the lead changed hands on the last lap. Kevin Lacroix could not keep it on the racetrack. Right to the very outside of the asphalt, but he keeps it in the ballpark in turn number eight. Two more turns for Lacroix. Gently through turn number nine, you see the spray off the tires. Ranger a little bit too far back to make a move into turn number 10. He'll ease it off of the final corner and give the win to the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Andrew Ranger going to hang on for a second and out of nowhere. Here comes Gary Clute. The battle for third is side by side. Clute to the inside. Lapsovich slow to get on the gas and that's going to cost him the final podium position. Give it to the Pioneer Bulls number 59 of Gary Clute. What a drive for Gary Clute as we have a look at the top 10. The Dumoulin brothers, six and seventh LP, hung in there on those slicks. And how about Brett Taylor and Adam Martin? 
David Michaud coming home just outside the top 10 in 11th spot. Ryan Clute 12th. And Jason White salvaging a 14th position finish here today. Let's head down to victory lane. Todd Lewis is standing by. Todd. After a full afternoon here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, Kevin Lacroix braves the slippery roof to jump up and celebrate his first victory of the season. Smiles all around. Congratulations from the crew. A kiss for his new wife. And Kevin, wow, what an afternoon. It was so dramatic all afternoon. But then on that last lap, what did you do to get the lead back and then stay in front? Well, uh, it was pretty difficult out there. I couldn't see anything uh, on the track because of windshield all the... Uh, the smoke or so I uh, just uh, I went in the grass on second last lap uh, Andrew passed me and then I had uh, someone to follow so it was a little bit easier but uh, yeah he I don't know I've always uh, performed very well in the rain and uh, I'm happy to uh, to do it the same in these cars. Kevin Lacroix is the winner of the season opener at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Well, Andrew solid day here crazy afternoon talk about that last lap you got a shot couldn't quite pull it off. Yeah, you know what? I'm very happy about my team. You know, we have a new engine program this year, and uh, to have a great second place finish, it's awesome for us. I try in the last lap. You know, I did a little bit too much lap on the the, the drive with the rain tire. So at the end, I was pushing really hard on the front. So uh, I was not able to carry enough speed at the end. But uh, I tried Kevin a little bit. He did a little mistake. I passed him, and right there in corner two, he keep me. So uh, I'm very happy about my team. You know, the Pencil Mopar pushed really hard, and uh, I'm very happy about that. Great solid day for Andrew Ranger to start off the 2017 season here. Glenn's the lucky one. He gets to stand underneath an umbrella as we take a look at the point standings after the first event. Kevin Lacroix obviously is your points leader, but a lot of drivers putting themselves in a good position for this season. Dave, every point is so valuable. There's 13 points paying races this season. You've got to get it wherever you can. Here's Ben and Olivia from Can-Am handing the hardware to Kevin Lacroix. And a big congratulations to Gary Clute coming from two laps down in this one. The Can-Am 200 has been brought to you by Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. Spectra Premium, automotive parts developed and engineered in Canada. And by Honeydew from Clean Flow, on Honey of a Lou. From here, Dave, we head back to Delaware Speedway for the first time in years in what should be a phenomenal race in London, Ontario. From all of us at the NASCAR on TSN crew, we'll see you at Delaware. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.